Hello guys, welcome to Richie's Diesel Performance. Uh, I wanted to take this opportunity today to showcase the fuel system on a uh, on an LML Duramax. Um, I use this opportunity as I'm wrapping up the assembly of this engine here um, without the harnesses and whatnot on it and all the extensive plumbing to showcase what the fuel system looks like. It's a bit more accessible right now without any of the, uh, the wiring on it. Um, this one is a 2011. If your LML looks a little bit different than that, uh, than the one we have here, it's because the feed and return on the 11s are in front of the crankcase vents. 2012 up to 16, they're on the back side over here. Same size lines, just a little bit different configuration. Why GM did that, I have no idea, but it is only found on 2011s. But anyway, uh, what we have here is the feed and the return. The feed's about a half inch. The return is about three eighths or so, maybe five sixteenths. Um, if we follow the feed, it comes up over here. Um, under the fuel temp sensor and right across it's let's assume that it's it's one of the later ones it would just be back here but the path is the same it goes down under the turbo under the bridge comes up over here I know it's difficult to see with my finger but it runs through here and comes out to this one now this is going to go over to our fuel filter fuel filter housing is removed right now for ease of accessibility to the engine while it's uh, being assembled and for the purposes of this video so let's say it goes through the filter, out of the filter, and then it goes into this port. It's going to follow this port down. It's going to come here, and you're going to see this vacuum test port on here. Uh, the reason for the vacuum test port on Duramax is this has been on here since 2001 with the LB, uh, LB7s. This is to test uh, for fuel restriction, um, for fuel, I guess, hemorrhages, if you want to call it that. If there's a leak somewhere and it's not drawing fuel up to the engine properly, you would find that and test it through this point here. If you have a lift pump, uh, this is no longer a vacuum. This is going to be positive pressure because the pump is going to deliver pressure up here. But on the back of the CP3 or CP4, in this case, this is a CP3, you find the gear pump at the rear of the, uh, of the pump housing. That gear pump is what is drawing up fuel out of the tank to this fuel system through everything under vacuum, again, unless there's a lift pump. Um, but once the fuel hits that pump, uh, it comes in through this line right here. This is our feed line. It goes to the center, and you can see that's the feed, that's the regulator. Now it's inside of the pump. The pump is going to take that delivery pressure, whether it's vacuum, sorry, pressure, whether it's through a uh, lift pump, or vacuum, whether it's through that gear pump only. Um, then it's going to take it, and it's going to compound it, and it's going to come out of this line here. Again, this is a CP3, not a CP4, so there is only one feed line. This line comes out of here, runs around the front, and goes over to our passenger side fuel rail. Now, this cap is here because there is a CP3 conversion on this engine. If it were a CP4, there would be two lines here. And the reason for the two lines is that the pump has two feeds out the back. The CP4 does not have four plungers, it has two. The CP3 does have three plungers to it. Um, it is a little bit confusing, but the four is uh, a little bit different design with higher pressure, lower volume. Um, and then also at the back of the four, you would see um, the hydrocarbon injector feed. Uh, ninth injector um, has a couple of different names, but that's the, uh, the HCI. And I'll get to that in a moment when we get to the passenger side valve cover. Uh, that would come up through here, it mounts over here, and then goes off that direction. Um, so let's say it comes out of the CP3. We now have it in the rail through this line here. Um, out of the rail, you're going to see this crossover line. That's this one. That's going to run down under the bridge, under the turbo, come up over here to the driver's side rail, and then it's going to feed our driver's side rail. On the driver's side rail, we have the rail pressure sensor and the pressure relief valve, also known as a secondary regulator, depending upon who you talk to. I like to refer to this as a regulator, even though it is what dumps off the excess pressure known as the valve. Older Duramaxes used to have a mechanical one only, but this one is electronic, clearly. Um, if this opens, when it opens, this is our discharge port. This comes out and it feeds it back into the feed circuit. This is the bigger of the two. This is the supply from the tank. Um, now, let's get over to the injectors themselves. As you can see, each injector has its own line here, here. This is, the, uh, this is the even side. This is the odd side. Now over here, um, this is, although it does look like it's part of the return circuit, this is not. Um, this is a pressure gauge for the feed. Uh, this is located on the feed circuit going to the filter. This um, basically, I haven't seen a code for my, myself, but this is uh, what tells the ECM if there's an issue with delivery pressure or delivery flow. 
But back to the return side, each injector has its return lines, uh, I'm sorry, its return ports feeding into this. Um, this is going to come up here. This is for our ninth injector. Again, this is what's not used in the ninth injector. This is the ninth injector or the HCI. Uh, this goes down to the downpipe. That's where the, uh, the nozzle is. This is the injector itself. This is the body that controls what comes out of it. Okay, um, on the return side here. So this is the return for the passenger side head. This is the return for the driver side head. In another video, we showcased what would happen. Um, given a no-star condition, uh, this little thing here is a regulator. It's got a spring and a diaphragm in it, and what it does is it keeps a constant return pressure on the um, return side of the injectors. It's about 70 PSI or so, give or take, uh, but what this does is it keeps the body of the injectors closed so that the, uh, the engine can start, the engine can run properly, uh, this is only something that's exclusive to the LML Duramax. It makes it a little bit more difficult to troubleshoot, but that's what this little thing is. Uh, this is all one circuit. It is not serviceable otherwise. It comes together, even this little port right here. Um, you got the two coming into it, and then you got your one coming out. And where this goes is around here and back up to the return side. This just gets um, dumped back into the return going back to the tank. Uh, in the video that I showed you previously, um, probably about a year ago or so, this is the hose that I explained you take off and you put shop air to in order to put a, um, a pressure on the return side of the injectors to get the engine to start. I've had some situations where we did a CP3 conversion and due to the lack of fuel, whatever the case was, um, the truck did not start. And once we applied shop air to this line here, uh, it did simulate return pressure on the uh, on the exhaust side of the injectors and it allowed the truck to start. Um, so the, sol the solution for that was to replace this return circuit going to all the injectors and uh, and then the truck started. But uh, I just figured this was a perfect opportunity to showcase that and uh, give a clearer explanation of how everything works together collectively. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time.